Oh, I see. You think it's fun to punch a squirt on the face, huh? He's an endangered species, you derp. That's all you're doing, all you is, bro, a derp. You better pick a god and stop praying, because I'm about to take you to church. Take him to church, Ivy! Another one. Another one. Another one. Hey there, everyone. This is the pastor. I hope that you're having a blessed day. Today, we're going to be doing the Ivysaur guide. It's going to be a little bit different from the Squirtle guide, uh, but I appreciate you guys hanging in there with me anyways. So, let's get right into it. Ivysaur is a character who easily gets pressured. Characters like Shoto's, for instance, like Terry. Those characters, when they get right in your face, Ivysaur can do nothing about it. So, the number one thing Ivysaur always needs to do is stay mobile and stay on the move. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily call this Runaway, but Runaway definitely helps. <laughs> um, bigger stages with platforms are most certainly your friends. Small stages can work for Ivy, only if the opponent's character is similar in speed. Uh, one matchup that I would suggest is Ivysaur versus Wario. Wario has slightly faster airspeed, so he can track down and does have the temptation to chase. But at the same time, Ivysaur has a long enough back air, uh, big enough hitboxes such as up air and down air, neutral air, to where he can actually stuff out Wario consistently. So running away or staying mobile tends to work very well. With that being said, there are some moves of Ivysaur's that will make you stall, such as forward tilt, down tilt, and a few others. Uh, they all have their usage, and uh, they can all be very good, but you tend to want to stay away from those. Always try to stick with the moves that keep you mobile. Alright, let's get into training mode. Okay, so we're going to start off by talking about the moves and what they kind of do. Uh, first off, this is your jab. There's just one and two right there. And then if you keep going, you can mash it like this. Jab is okay. Um, sometimes people get caught in it, sometimes people don't. I wouldn't really use it. Um, yeah, there's <laughs> that move, it, it's really more of a mix-up in case you're trying to unstale moves. But ultimately, you don't want to use that. Your down tilt is really good, and also Ivysaur can do a, a crawl. So this is really helpful, no Ivysaur really does this. But uh, if you're in a slower matchup against like a Ganondorf or something like that, spacing away and just sniping out like a, a neutral air from them or something like that, that's really helpful. Another move um, on the ground is forward tilt. This move is a multi hitbox. It can be okay when you like run up like that. If you've been doing a lot of dash grab or whatever, you can use that instead as a mix up. And uh, it's okay. You know, it's not safe on shield. Look at this end lag. Takes that long to get into shield. So it's pretty punishable overall. Um, not safe on shield. Once again, kind of like a, a hard, hard punish move. Down tilt as well has a lot of end lag. Your rapid jab has a lot of end lag. And lastly, you have up tilt. Up tilt has the lowest end lag out of everything. Plus, uh, I can't exactly show it because it's Lucina, but when Ivy is at the top of this, in fact, let me slow it down real quick. When Ivy's at the top of up tilt, um, the vines that are pushing him up, none of that can get hit. You won't get hit by doing that. So this isn't like Mewtwo's tail or anything. Anything, any projectile will pass through under. Whereas Ivysaur himself is the hitbox and the hurtbox. So this is a good move to dodge. Um, it also makes it a good move on shield because if someone tries to do a tilt or something out of shield like that, and let's say you landed on them with back air, you can up tilt and whatever their out of shield option is, it'll miss simply because you're just dodging it with the up tilt. So that's a, that's a good usage for up tilt. Other than that, up tilt doesn't have much. You could use it if you're trying to like juggle. You could just do up tilt a little bit lower than a full hop up air. So you could use it for spacing like that, but ultimately, I mean, I don't know, the animation to me takes quite some time. It's not safe on shield. Um, so if you did this on shield and someone does an aerial, you're probably going to get hit. So it's it's not like the best move, but it feels like it's one of the best tilts. I think down tilt is the best tilt, up tilt is the second best, forward tilt's the third best, and then your jab is absolutely last. 
Um, so now let's get into aerials. First off, you have Neutral Air. And Neutral Air is a fantastic move out of full hop. When you land with it on the ground, you have a lot of lag. In fact, let me slow it down one more time so you guys can see this. You see how he bounces? Kind of on his back first. That is the amount of lag that you have. So you have this weird little bounce where neutral air won't be safe on shield unless you full hop it. And then, I don't know if you guys saw it from there, but you can actually air dodge right after. Um, so if you time it correctly, you should be able to just, uh, you should be able to always shield on command, just like that. So you always want to full hop these, you don't want to short hop. Um, there's a huge temptation with Ivy players to where when you're in shield and someone hits you, you want to neutral air out. That's fine, but ultimately if someone hits your shield, you really don't want to do that. Um, this move, it's so laggy and it only goes so far. Plus, at the end of it, you're in lag. So if someone calls you out, and maybe they space move like Lucina spaces forward on shield, and you try to out shield it, and she dashed back, you're getting punished 100% of the time. So this short hop neutral air, not worth it. But ultimately, I would look for a dash into something because his initial dash is actually really good. His run, slow, but initial dash, very quick. Let's talk about back air. Back air is the move that, one of the moves I, I love to use. I think every Ivy does. It's honestly fantastic, covers a lot. Makes you feel like a true genuine sword character. Uh, two hits. It's kind of weak, but that's really good because it allows for confirms. It can link into itself pretty easily, I would say. And at higher percents, it can set up kill combos, which we'll talk about that in a second. But basically, this is your best move to back air and then keep dashing. You can kind of space it like this if you want. But this is one of those moves that definitely helps you be mobile. Full hop nair helps you be mobile. So if you're going to land, probably land with back air, not nair. Um, you know, you can be way up here, then boom. This forwarder has a good deal of lag. It's similar to neutral air, but it's less. And this forward air is actually basically the same as down throw. Your down throw animation starts from the top and comes down and sends at a very similar angle. Look at that. Look at those angles versus those angles. They're literally the same exact angles. Aside from the damage, Border basically can combo into your upbeat the same that your down throw can. So check this out. So Border upbeat, true combo. Whoops. <laughs> Come on, Lucina. Down throw upbeat, basically a true combo. Everything you do from down throw, if you literally have no clue how to use forward air, now you do. And then lastly, you have your up air and down air, which are almost the same. But, there is a big difference. So up air, it sends you down. And what I mean by that is, it pushes you down. So, if you ever get launched off the side blast zone and you're looking for momentum downwards, up air, you just want to mash it. And when it comes out, it'll push you down real quick and it'll help you recover faster. If you're ever trying to slow down, that down air, it basically stalls out your momentum, especially when rising. It's really hard to combo off of down air because you're just so floaty after it. And this is why Tweak started doing full hop down air onto a platform because the platform cancels the lag, it ends it early, so that you can true combo an up air. 
So whenever you've seen Tweak do the that into the oops, upper, then that that's the reason why he did it, is because this down air is super floaty. And sure, at the end it auto cancels, but I mean, come on, that takes forever. So this move really, you want to just use it at ledge. In fact, if you just auto buffer it, the hitbox is so big, the weak hit will always still hit under ledge. So you could just crouch and then Y plus A and it'll just do it for you. Up air for juggling. Down air is kind of like Pyra's down air. It's to trap into an up air. Um, and the range of it's insane. Check this out. Still hits from there. Still hit from up there. Okay, it bare. So basically almost at the, the top of double jump. Um, it will not hit, but just slightly under that, <laughs> your down air is so big that it will always hit your opponent. It's the weak hit, don't don't misunderstand, it's the weak hit, so it's not going to give a good spike. It might trip sometimes, it's kind of weird. Um, but ultimately, yeah, that move is almost broken. <laughs> okay, so what have we learned so far? Back air is the best to stay mobile. Forward air kind of stalls you a little. If you're gonna do Nair, you don't want to do that one, you want to do one way up here, full hop or so. In fact, you can always get a second aerial out and then land with forward air or back air. Um, if you're using tilt, you want to do something like down tilt because even though it has some lag, it actually sets up for trips that you can go for like a smash attack like that. So, when your forward air to up B stops working, you can start doing back air up B as well, because back air, once again, low damage, but also it sends, it's it's more of a combo move anyways. Um, so forward air is for like hard punish combos, you know, because it's like down throw. But your back air is for on the move combo. So this, this back air is so helpful. Oh, I never talked about dash attack. This move sucks and rocks at the same time. Um, lots of damage, good like, get off you move very quick in that sense but um you know like it, it could be used to frame trap you could probably do something dumb like a dash attack and then up b <laughs> you know you could do something like that people won't expect it at all but ultimately whoo that lag all right let's talk about specials real quick so you have neutral b which is probably one of your best because it did 21 by itself. Did you see that? It drags in too. Um, and if you miss the first... Mm, I don't know if I can necessarily show it. Yeah, I don't think I can. Okay. Basically, if you miss the first ground hitbox to drag in, there is a second one. Um, but there's only a second one throughout the entire duration. And it's kind of early, which makes this move pretty bad. But you can do things like back air into neutral. Let me see if I can get that cleaner. Yeah, you can do something like that. One way that you could also do it is you could land on somebody with bullet seed. And I found that's actually really effective. If you've been spacing on shield with a forward air, and let's say you get like one forward air, the second one you should go in with is bullet seed. Because did you see that pickup? Even like if they try to shield grab this move, they're going to get caught into it. And that's a lot of random damage to be hit by. If your opponent isn't playing mobile and they're not chasing you down, they're trying to play neutral too much and they shield because they're looking for a shield grab, bullet seed is your best friend. Up B is primarily your finishing move. Um, there's a lot of tricks with this move. So when you're at ledge, you can cancel and swap out. Or, I, I don't know if you guys saw this, uh, I kind of actually messed it up. So, because I use tap jump, a lot of Pokemon trainers do not. And there's a reason for this. When you do up B, you have to, if you're not using tap, if you're using tap jump, you have to do a perfect up B so that you don't accidentally buffer jump beforehand. If you do that, it should look like this. Let me see if I can get it. Nope, I got it right there. Hold on. Oh, got it right there. 
It's actually super tough. Oh, I got it right there. You can save your jump for a second up B and tether to ledge like that. But it has to be literally frame perfect. So if you turn tap jump off, you can cancel your up B a lot easier and just immediately jump. And that's how you see a lot of people doing like the, they tether real quick, jump, and then they'll like side B onto stage and get a, a kill confirm or whatever. Oh, the, the schmix up, dude. He schmicks me up so hard there. Holy... It's all because they have tap jump off, and it's way easier to control that way. There's one other way that this helps, okay? Your up B is essentially a third jump, or it's a second hitbox in the air, depending on how you want to think of it. So, you could be like up here, you do that, you do that, and then boom, come down with an aerial. Or like... Like, that was probably a little bit cleaner. Like, think about how long in the air you can actually stay if you use up B+. Plus, you keep your momentum. So for me, I like to use one, two, and use that as like a third jump. And you could even use it like, if you're facing this way, you can up B that way so you can get your back air out. It's a good way to kind of like bait out and stuff. And I don't really see trainers do it a lot, but you know what? It helps. You know, it kind of gives you an extra jump like a DDD player will utilize. Uh, it's unexpected. And, um, yeah. I mean, it's it's nice you don't go into free fall because you can do whatever you want after. You could even just, like... I don't know. You could just throw out a projectile and then go in that way. Side special is... You know, it's... It's pretty bad. <laughs> um... Some people think this move is absolutely absurd, it's amazing, whatever. Honestly, you can jump over this move and punish it. Lots of lag, especially if you want to do another, because look how much startup this is. That's a lot of startup. So even though the projectile seems like it's coming at a fast or okay like pace, it's really not. It's pretty slow. It's like Wolf Laser. You literally, if you're a character like Wario, a character like Lucina, and you call it out, all you have to do is jump when I side B. You will cross over it and you will be able to hit me free, free of charge. You can start a combo. You can do whatever you want. This move is literally like saying, hey, have your way with me. Do whatever the heck you want. Try to stay away from it. This range right here is like barely outside of the punish range. If I'm in here, it's punishable. That's a lot of distance. You're probably wondering why. It's literally because of the burst range. If Lucina full hops from here, I'm definitely getting hit. Maybe even a short hop if the Razor Leaf goes low, because I don't know if you guys have noticed, but you can actually, uh, you can kind of control if it goes down or not. So when you do side B, if you hold up, it goes up. If you do it and hold down, at the end of it, it goes down. And sometimes it's like, for the most part, it'll listen to your command. On occasion, it won't. But that's pretty rare. You uh, you have the choice to control it or not to at all. That's totally up to you. Uh, but one other thing that's really helpful is that there's a slow one. Right, so if you tap it, it's fast, it's long. If you tilt it... It's slow, it doesn't go too far. What is the purpose of this? Well, thank you for asking. <laughs> um, forward air. This move. You can combo with it. Or, you can use the slower one to actually frame trap an air dodge. So that you can combo another forward air into it, or an up B. So that's, that's pretty bonkers. You can use it as a way to trap somebody and where they go. And typically, if they air dodge and if you line it up correctly, um, air dodge will lose to it 100% of the time. Ultimately, this Razor Leaf, really good at trapping. Um, and Forward Air is really good at hard punishing any sort of frame trap. The last thing I'm going to talk about, and I'm not going to keep it too long, is about Ivysaur's throws. So first off, you obviously have your down throw. It's your main combo throw. You also have forward throw, which is a position throw. Forward throw here could set up for an edge guard where you can chase your opponent like that. 
Then you also have your back throw. Should kill around like 115 or so. Get a little bit more damage. Okay, there we go. Yeah, it, it kills pretty early. Um, and then you have up throw. Up throw is also a combo throw. A lot of Ivy Sword players do not use it. Um, if you buffer your up air, it's a true combo. But yeah, typically it's like at later percents. If you do a full hop nair, then you can do that combo. So up throw has some good opportunities, but ultimately it's just kind of a juggle throw. You know, it helps you kind of like stay under your opponent and move them and do stuff like that. Down throw is the one that you're pretty much always going with. Um, though I think at zero, up throw is honestly a great option. That's pretty much all there is to know about throws. There's a lot of moves with Ivy to where I, I personally think he's the worst Pokemon out of the trio because there's a lot of moves that you use them and you think, man, this move is so good because of what you get off of it, but it's so much risk. And so honestly, the only way to play like risk-free with Ivy is platforms because lower lag on down air, you have a good back air, and uh, if you have a big enough stage, you can utilize this dash, you can camp in the air, you know, stay away from people, make them want to approach, and then play more runaway with your aerials. Honestly, that's kind of how you play Ivysaur. Being aggressive with him, you have to know what you're getting into. Uh, and if you don't, then sorry, <laughs> you're probably going to lose. Anyways, that's it for the Ivysaur guide. I hope this was helpful to you guys. I hope that you learned a few things. And uh, I hope that you found this interesting. Uh, maybe it'll help you beat an Ivysaur player, or maybe it'll help you improve your Ivysaur. Pretty much that's... That's how you play Ivy. There's nothing really crazy to it. Your ledge tricks and stuff like that, we can go over more in the full-on Pokemon Trainer Guide uh, when I talk about all three and how they work together. But until then, have a blessed day.